What's up, guys? Welcome to the Comedy Pop-Up Podcast. It's your boy, Sean Grant. As you know, what we do here, man, we bring the best, the brightest talent in L.A., and we present them to you. We do some inside comedy baseball. I got to shout out my boy, Paulie, on sound over there. What up, Paul? Yo, what up, what up? Yeah, and here today, man, we got some amazing guests. Let me not waste any time, man, because I can't wait to talk to him. We got a former member of the Growling Sunday Company. He has appeared on classic hit TV shows like Parks and Rec, the Office in Brooklyn Nine Nine, and he's the outgoing artistic director at the West Side Comedy Theater and the owner of the Voodoo Comedy Theater in Denver. My man, Mr. Nick Armstrong. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my guy, man. Thanks for coming, Nick. Thanks and, for having me. And right next to me, we ori originally from San Francisco. She's a regular at the Punchline and Cobb's there. She was a featured performer at the San Francisco Sketch Fest and is fresh off a monster showcase set on the Conan O'Brien show. Give it up for Emily Catalano. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, thank you guys so much for joining me, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks for having us. Of course, us. man. I, I always start when, um, you know, a lot of our audience is like young comics or inside comedy insiders. So when I ask the first question, it's not really stand-up or even performer-based, but who would you say, I'll start with you, Nick, who are your first three major comedic influences? And I mean, it could be comic books, family members, TV characters, regular books, like, who do you remember laughing at first off in life? Uh, honestly, being a heavier set guy, Chris Farley Chris was Farley. my generation. Yeah. Because he just, reckless abandonment, uh. and I just kind of took that and copied the behavior okay and i like people responded to it you know <laughs> yeah. but it felt kind of cool to be like you know here's this big guy just like doesn't care yeah loves to do it you know and i he was definitely someone that i clicked with yeah kind of being similar a lot younger but like uh, that that was like my big like epiphany like oh i'm gonna be like him yeah you know okay yeah. anybody know nobody in your family funny oh you? well no no one in my family's funny but <laughs> i get most of my material for the, from, from them, them. <laughs> yeah nice uh no my my parents are very catholic <laughs> And, uh, uh, you know, probably the typical story. Uh, okay. But uh, they're, yeah, they're not funny, but I get a lot of uh, stuff from them for uh, sure. <laughs> My dad's a conspiracy theorist, too. He worked for the oh. government. Yeah. Oh, he worked for the government? He worked for the government. Oh, my gosh. But he thinks, like... There's a lot of stuff going on. So he knows a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. He says he does, but yeah. he also was like, I'm not giving you my social security and stuff or whatever on the computer. He doesn't have a computer or a cell phone. But then I'll be what? like, well, you worked for the government. They have all your <laughs> information. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, dinner's kind of funny. Sometimes. Right. No, that's fun. What, what yeah. about you, Emily? Who would you say are some of your first comedic influences, like from TV? Or um, Tina Fey was a big one. Ah, uh, yeah. SNL. 30 Rock, yeah. and um, just Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah, man. Oh, heck yeah. Anybody in your family funny, or did you? My, <laughs> my dad tries to be. <laughs> yeah. He's got, like, the, funny about it, you know, on the golf course, like, the dad jokes and stuff. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, yeah. dad. <laughs> heck yeah, man. All right, so, uh, when, and you started in San Francisco, right? Yeah, um, Santa Cruz actually. Santa they Cruz. had like some open mics okay. and like a couple showcases. And then to actually like do more shows, I had to move to San Francisco. Oh wow! So I was there for a few years. Are they close by, or did you were you going to school? Or yeah, something? it was like a oh. hour, hour and twenty minutes. Oh okay. Mm -hmm. And then you oh so and, and Nick, you started in the improv scene as a performer, mm -hmm. right? So and did you you started in um in Denver? No, in Los Angeles. You started in Los mm -hmm. Angeles. I, I'm from Sacramento, and then uh, moved down here for school. Yeah. And then found a place called I.O. that had just oh, opened. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And subsequently <laughs> then closed later. Right. But, yeah, yeah. but it had just opened in, like, 99, so I got in there, like, 2001, and yeah. it had found its home where it was in Hollywood. And so, yeah, just uh, watched shows, was inspired, and started yeah. taking classes, and the rest is history at right. that point. <laughs> now, was Del, uh, I know Del, Del Close founded I.O., right? Or is that how? No, that? it's Sharna Halpern, dude. Right. And Del was like a guru, if you will. Gotcha. Like, he taught there and stuff Was like he that. still around in 99? No, he died in 99. In 99? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, um, so I did never met him. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. But, it, all right, cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, would you say, like, 
do you notice a difference in that scene versus in the LA improv scene versus like Chicago or New York? I know you explained. Oh, for time. sure. Like an improv wise. Yeah. 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 It's definitely like different. I mean, audiences are different. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. For sure. And then, um, but like, yeah, the, the improvisers, I mean, there's a little like sometimes friendly competition between like Chicago and LA improvisers. Yeah, right. uh, a lot of Chicago improvisers don't think LA improvisers are as good as them. Oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, it's true. It's a weird thing. I never got into that stuff. Yeah. I was just like, I'm just going to get on stage and have fun. Like, yeah. If you, but so, a lot of people go like, oh, you're from Chicago. So I'm like, oh, I guess that means you think I'm good. Right. <laughs> right. Like, Yo. No, I'm from Sacramento. I grew I, up on a farm. Right. <laughs> Yo, people don't realize the beef. I mean, it's a passive beef. Because uh, everybody knows stand up, we we realize there's stand up beef, but there's definitely between there the different schools and improv. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I've seen people get like made fun of for doing clap edits because <laughs> yeah. unless you're Bear Strike Mouse or like uh, Crazy Uncle Joe show, yeah. you know, it's like nah, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen like weird. It's like, like it's it's all the same when mm -hmm. you. I mean, yeah. So you do a clap or you tag. It's all the same. It's right, just the, right, like right. English versus metric system. Oh, <laughs> right. like Different like ways of doing it. You Yo, know? it's so, deep, man. Yeah. It's deep. Would you say what, what's the reputation with San Francisco? Con? I feel like, you know, you guys are writers, or is that what people would normally like? Really good writers. Um. Yeah, I think we're good. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think uh, when people say that, is that passively saying that you're not? Big performers, we're not, yeah. Or what is there's that? not like a ton of act outs, I guess. Uh huh. Okay. More, yeah, writing based jokes. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I haven't, like, I don't think, like, when people come up from LA to San Francisco, yeah. like, kind of the reputation is like, oh, uh, they're going to bomb. <laughs> 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 because uh, LA is very, it's like alty in the crowd in San Francisco. is like, okay, but what? where are the jokes? Where are the punchlines? Right, right, I right. I think because they're just like used to that. Yeah, yeah, and you're you're an actress. Like you, you come to LA because you, you like you audition. You you act as well, right? You no, it. not yet. No, but <laughs> I mean, no. I I am a writer. I want to write. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say your style. Like I watch you. I mean, you're an incredible performer, writer. In my opinion, but I don't know, like. Does your style? I was wondering if uh, if it puts you in that box. And maybe it's a good thing to be in a like. Oh, she's a great writer. But do you think that hinders you from getting like the acting opportunities that I you don't, could? No, I don't think so. I mean, yeah, that's like something people say a lot after my set. Like, wow, you're a great writer. Right. Um, but I think like the performing is just like whatever I bring to it. Like I right. I don't know if I could like play anything or act as anything, but like oh. I definitely have a, a unique style that yeah. could like be in a commercial or something. Right, right, right. <laughs> like well, or play yourself on television, or, yeah. like a lot yeah. of stand-ups do. Yeah, yeah, I could. Yeah, I have a hard time like writing for myself for some reason. Yeah, acting. Yeah. But what, what was some of the uh, when you made the move from LA? I mean, from San Francisco to LA, did you get any cautionary uh, advice that you know, like don't do this or don't go to these areas or do this type uh, of? Uh, no. <laughs> You just kind of came out here? I, I, well, I started coming down like a year before I moved here, just ah. like every other month, just to sort of like get a feel for it. Uh -huh. um, but no, I mean, there's like definitely a difference between West Side and East Side, and that's kind of like what people always say. Oh, okay. What would you say is the difference that maybe some of these guys can be enlightened? Um, I think it's just people just stick to either one side because is they don't right? want to... Do like the mics in the other side of town? <laughs> Is that right? oh, okay. it, like, on the other side of the track. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just like it takes a long time. Yeah. To get over there. But oh, literally just you mean to like, drive? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's not like a style thing. It's just distance. Yeah, I mean, um, I I don't really notice the style thing. Oh, okay. But East Side, I guess, is like more alty. Right, right. What they say. So what they say. Yeah. Um, Have you uh, and as artistic director of Westside, you you were there for five years or was it? Uh, over three. Over three. Over three years. Did you did you hear any of that, Nick? As uh, uh, sometimes I would like. I would have folks come over from the west side. They're like, oh, I usually, I'm from the east side. I perform there and just coming out and branching out and trying something. Right, right, right. Um, I, you know, never heard of any, like, differences because we didn't talk about that. But definitely, right. like, I know, I mean, uh, 
people don't want to drive places in right. LA a lot, and they get comfortable in their thing. But I always tell them it's best to try all audiences. Absolutely. You know, you got to try your material in front of anything and everything. Yeah. You know, because you know, East Side, you Santa Monica is way different. Right. Than the East Side, the audience, especially when we get at West Side. Yeah. You're getting regular people. Yeah. You're getting like tourists. You're getting. So it's nice to kind of get that. I mean, it's, they're still Santa Monicans for the most part. Right, right, you know, right, very right. liberal. But, like, you know, it's good to test. That's why we get, like, celebrities to come in and test their stuff, too. Yeah. You know, and things like that. And they're trying it out and went before they hit the road or something. Absolutely. But I think it's important, you know. Yeah, get in your car and go. It doesn't matter. Yeah, find a way. Yeah, find man. A way. Metro or something. Yeah, like that, the metro man. goes, like, right there, yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. You guys just had, who was, who was Jerry was in there last week. Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld, Seinfeld, yeah. Oh, my gosh. How does that work? Does he hit you up? Does he, like, call the club or uh, well, his management? Or Neil Brennan uh, oh, brought okay, him right. in, and they were on... Uh, Jerry's show there, and like I think that's how they connected. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so he was out and came in. That was uh, pretty crazy. That's insane, yeah. man. That's so dope. How do you do? Uh, <laughs> great. <laughs> People loved it, but he's trying out new stuff, yeah. which I think right. is always, you know, this guy doesn't have to do anything. He hasn't had to do anything since right. he did Seinfeld, <laughs> maybe even before a little bit. Right. But like, you know, I I, I applaud those so people. So he bombed. Yeah, he bombed, he bombed. <laughs> Besides, for yeah, Seinfeld. He yes, he yeah. saw. Oh my gosh, man! <laughs> I have seen celebrities bomb. I will say that uh, yeah. for sure. But they're trying stuff out, and I think that's admirable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're—I mean, as artistic director, you're kind of charged with uh, the tough job of sometimes, like you know, uh, well, for sure, with the improv scene, there's a curriculum at West Side, mm-hmm. and then that curriculum you can lead you to an alley team, sure. and then up to a house team. Have you like what's what does an improviser do to stand out to you uh, going from curriculum to alley team to then, you know, what helps them as a performer, like in your eyes, stand out? Um, I mean, in my general terms, I could go into greater detail, but like talent, obviously, right. have to have have it, right. you know, right. and you could tell, you know, if someone's comfortable, confident, has that, yeah. um, you know, if they're reliable, uh, you know, also if they show up. They're right. on time. They're you know they're going to rehearsals. They're doing the work. Right. And then community, meaning that they're involved in the the house that they're at. Right. You know, it doesn't mean mean they can't go anywhere else and do things. I I love that stuff. I think you should mm-hmm. learn from as many places as you can. Right. But that they like contribute in some way because you know these theaters we're not making tons of money. You right, know what right, I mean? Right, so like right. I like that. That's like the least one of them. But like yeah. I think talent and just reliable. Like w- there's enough people in L. A. to yeah. where if you're talented, but you're not showing up by, right, <laughs> you right, know, right, like, and yeah. I've had to do that. It, yeah. It's unfortunate, but like, you know, th- that's what I look for. I look for people that support that are positive. Yeah. Uh, negative people obviously are not fun to work with. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you had any spaz outs or like, like. This guy, Sean Grant. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, keep it on the low. I, yeah, being an artistic director, I'm sure any artistic director can tell you there's a great side to it and there's yeah. a very bad side to it. Oh, uh, like people that I've, I've been like uh, harassed. And oh. you know things like that, There's def- but you know, I'm fine. Right, I'm right, right, right. I'm okay. But you know, you get people that are not exactly maybe right. You know, need help. You right. Know, so you say harass like in your email or in person? Like do they email in person? Oh uh, mostly in email because people like to hide right, behind right, an right. email. Oh my god! But gosh. yeah, it's crazy. Oh, <laughs> if you have two hours, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man! Have you uh, like in your time doing comedy, Emily? Have you had any beefs or any of any uh, other? Com- I, I'm I'm sorry. We can. We're going to go there a little bit. I'm trying to get some clickbait out of you guys. <laughs> yeah. That's my job, man. I'm trying I to knew do it. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we already got Jerry Seinfeld bombed. Yeah. And, uh, no, we're not going to say that. But anything go down yeah, with I you? Yeah, I called out Jerry. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> called out Jerry. <laughs> but besides Jerry Seinfeld, do you have any uh, other legit beefs? In, uh, <laughs> I feel like the beef comes from when you produce the uh, show. So yeah. I've avoided that. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, producing show yeah. so i don't have to say no to anybody right I think. it's tough man. it is a tough thing that would suck <laughs> oh man Has and being a producer you probably would you get hounded you mm-hmm. get like you know you produce a show everybody wants to be on get email you their links to their videos right. there's a yeah lot of, there's a lot mm-hmm. of work and it, it stuff involved in that for absolutely sure. man absolutely like now when you got conan what was that process like when you first um 
got hit up about that or when they did they discover you at a club or at a room? Yeah, so I had sent in my tape like probably like a year ago and he might have watched it. I don't know if he watched it or not, but uh. you know. But then like yeah, I just moved down to LA and started doing shows, did some shows at Largo. My name was being passed around and I uh, sent him a new clip and he really liked it. Nice. So that was um that was probably in June or July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of this year and um he was like I'll try to get you on. And then <laughs> 6 <laughs> months later, <laughs> yeah, I was on. Nice. Yeah. It was cool. It was yeah, definitely. Were you ho- would you, were, did you feel like that was legit when he said, "Oh, I'll try to get you on." You were positive about it or you're like, "Oh, or did you you, you Yeah, re- no, I was like for sure positive about it, but then in the back of my mind I was yeah. always like it might not happen. Oh, <laughs> like okay. it might just for, he might forget about it or just like keep pushing it back. And you just played it cool. You didn't h- even follow up. You just waited till he hit you up. Oh no, we followed up. A uh. <laughs> <laughs> you harassed him good. good. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, that was you. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. And and Nick, like w- w- in the process, a lot of people don't know. Uh, like with uh, getting Sunday Company, right? Like when you first did that. What was that process like uh, at the time when you did it? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. It's tough. Like, it's one of the hardest things I've done in this town. Like, yeah. just getting there is, like, you know, an accomplishment. So yeah. I got there. Absolutely. And then, like, uh, it's, like, 40, 50 hours a week. It's like being on a Saturday Night Live. You're yeah. just writing. You're writing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You're pitching on Wednesday. Yeah. Rewriting on Thursday. Friday, you're uh, getting your cuts because yeah. you produce your own stuff. You don't right. have, like, a wardrobe or anything. Right. So you're doing that, and then Saturday you're memorizing the 13 sketches you're probably in, yeah. and then Sunday you go through it once, and then you're oh. up on stage at 7. Yeah, and for those it's who don't like, know, it's at the Groundlings every Sunday. Yeah, every Sunday. It's it's a great show to watch because if you go watch it, and I watch it still now, I'll go yeah. there because it's watching newer talent, but also the fact that they just put this together in a day, basically. Yeah. And it looks like the most polished show in Los Angeles. Right, <laughs> like right. more than some of the well-rehearsed shows. Right. And sometimes they do great and sometimes they fail. Yeah. And I've been in both of those things. It's, <laughs> nice, it's nice to watch. Yeah. It's fun to watch. Heck yeah. yeah. Well, what is your worst show? Let's let's go. I know oh you boy. do sketch and improv, so I, I want to hear uh, oh, your worst improv show. I want both, and I'm going to get your worst stand-up show. And I'm sure you got a couple. Everybody's got a couple oh stories gosh. like that. But what's your worst improv story? And uh, and I'll I'll give you guys time to think because mine's is I have a bad improv story. I've told my I got booed at the Apollo, so they know my stand up story. <laughs> that that sucks. But in improv, I did. We were doing a hip hop club. Uh, me and my indie team, Bernie Mac and Cheese, and I was doing the first sweep edit. These people have never seen a sweep edit before in their lives. I tripped. Over the DJ's sound equipment, his stuff, cause oh, mixer hits the ground, I fall, eat shit, and get to get up. Now they don't know why I started running, cause they're looking like, why did that guy just start? Run-? It looked like I was gonna tackle the girls on stage, so they're like confused. And I go, uh, that was a sweep edit, end of scene one, scene two, and I started making pancakes. <laughs> and my scene, my scene partner comes out and she goes, you fucked up, and that's how we started the next scene. I was like, yes, I did. And, and that was a great, and I actually saved it because she helped me. But it was so weird and awkward, and I feel like you're kind of stuck in it in an improv or in a sketch. Like, yeah. can you can you remember one that stands out to, or just a bad like maybe a venue that it just didn't fit in? People were talking, oh, or yeah. Well, I mean, I have a lot of them probably because I O was right on Hollywood Boulevard, so you would get <laughs> anything that would happen. So right, right, right. It was a Wednesday night. I was doing a show called King Ten. And yeah. we were Wednesdays at ten, and I think the artistic director, someone like made a deal with this two like bus company, <laughs> and so they dropped off like thirty <laughs> drunk women, like yeah, probably yeah. in their early twenties. Oh my! God. And they all came in hammered up on the balcony, and we could not do the show because they're like, "What Shakespeare?" <laughs> like they were just like <laughs> screaming like. And we couldn't stop them. <laughs> and, like, the security's trying to get, like, 30 of these people out. Oh like, we're just, gosh. like, trying to, like, get through the show. The audience downstairs is mad. Yeah. Like, 
it was a nightmare. So we were just like trying to include it into the show, right? Like, as much as we can. But like, it was painful. Yeah, I remember they got out maybe three quarters of the way through, and people like applauded. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then we're like, let's start over. And we took a suggestion and just did a fifteen minute <laughs> show. <for them>. Nice. <laughs> As I recall, that's what yeah, happened. Yeah. Oh, good. I mean, I'm glad they they figured that. I mean, you know that those are because I feel like a stand up, you have the option to you can directly address and like stop. But man, yeah, we weren't gonna win that battle, right? No so way. So we just no tried way. to push through. Oh my gosh, man, <laughs> Emily. Like I know your your style isn't very aggressive. You're like you said, a great writer. You have a great rhythm and cadence. Does your have you had hecklers and crazy show situations? Yeah, too many. Too um, many? Oh, my gosh. That surprises me. But, oh, yeah. I mean, because I pause so much that drunk, oh. drunk people think that, like, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> With the yeah, drunk. Of course. <laughs> yeah, or just men, even if they're not drunk. Oh. They'll, like, just jump in there and, like, yell something. Oh, my um, gosh. But I, th- I remember, like, I had just started doing stand-up, and one of my coworkers found out. Mm. And um, they're like, "Oh, when's like your next show?" And I was like, "Well, I'm going. I'm going to the Brainwash tonight, which is like <laughs> a San Francisco open mic at yeah. a laundromat." And um, I didn't think he would show up, but he showed up super hammered. <laughs> and he was like, "You know, it's bra- there." He was like the only audience <laughs> member, and he was like getting on stage. Yeah. And the producer there was like so pissed off. And yeah. I like I didn't go back for like a year because I was so oh. embarrassed. <laughs> no. Oh yeah. God, man. Dang. Oh. That's tough, so man. Don't tell your coworkers that you're right. kind of I made that mistake <laughs> yeah. once. Oh, but yeah. Uh, coworker came and we were up on the balcony at I again and he was yelling at the team because he was so wasted. He goes, You guys oh. should do this. Oh, and I'm like, it's a long form show. I can't explain <laughs> I can't explain to you everything right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Yeah, when those worlds collide, man. That's tough. <laughs> Now, with with sketch, with the fact that you've done sketch, I feel like that would be the hardest. When you're in a bad sketch, do you have any, like, oh, advice? Not saying that you've ever done one. Oh, I, uh, trust <laughs> oh, okay. me. I have, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, it seems the most, that because, like you said, there's the option with improv to try to include what's going on in stand-up. Mm-hmm. You can, you you know, you can figure maybe figure something out. But with a sketch, you're in it with somebody else. You have lines. What do you do to power through a bad sketch or a bad... <sighs> You honestly just get through it. You yeah. just power <laughs> through it, and Damn. you go through an existential crisis in the <laughs> middle of, like, on stage. Yeah. And you just, like, you're questioning everything you're doing in comedy. <laughs> honestly, like, I remember being Damn. Groundlings and being one of the worst sketches I've ever was received. And I knew it wasn't going to probably be great. And I just remember going, like, what am I doing with my life? Uh, but I'm delivering the lines. Like, geez. why... Am I here? <laughs> like so, that would be kind of like everything you go through on yeah. stage. <laughs> oh my gosh, with with both of you, and I feel like I can guess maybe yours. But what what moment, Nick, did you feel like I've arrived? I'm a pro. Like what what was that moment as far as in being an actor performer? Do you, Do you remember when that was? Or? Um, I guess I. I, I guess I feel like I'm a pro. I mean, but, like, at the same time, I feel like I'm still fighting and, like, trying to become that still, you know, even though I've done gigs and things like that. I guess if I felt like a pro, I would feel like I was finished. And I think oh. I don't give myself that title so I can keep pushing myself and being an, an artist. Wow. Uh, because if I'm, I feel like if I reach that level, then I have nowhere else to go. Dang. So that's kind of how oh, I feel that. Well, damn. Sorry, Emily. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> Same answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. That was a jump I right do, there. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I tell myself I'm a pro. <laughs> right. I gotta, like, get hyped up. But, yeah. Um, so it didn't feel like, like Conan, like, uh, oh, man, I'm, I'm here. I did that. And, like, I've arrived. Nobody can ever uh, 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 describe that it. Felt, yeah, that felt really good. But I had to, like, tell myself, like, you, uh, you're a pro. You got this. Right, right. Before yeah. you Before got Before I did Conan. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Like, stuff. I'm doing this because I'm a pro. Oh, hell yeah. And eh, now yeah. I'm a pro, I guess. I, I, I totally know. agree with you. Like, it's just like, <laughs> but I think good comics are good people, are people that are like that. Like, yeah. There is times when you have to be like, I am on set, I am a pro, I have to do this. Right. And then you get off and go like, I am back to nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> Dang, man. 
You gotta you know, figure it. Yeah, restart that thing, man. I wanted to. Oh, uh, before I get to my, I always have these questions at the end that I ask in general. But I wanted to um address like with with Jerry. Like we we all talked about Jerry. I don't want to make this about Jerry, but not just Jerry. But there's a lot of comics resurging. Eddie Murphy's mm-hmm. coming back. Being that you kind of are a like a gatekeeper to like younger comics, you are a young enough and coming comic. What are some ways to first of all, is that resurgence of of other of older comedy a good thing? Like, is that is that good that like guys are Jerry's still working or Eddie's coming back or like you know is that a hindrance on the new generation of comedy? I'll start with you, Nick. What do you think about that? Like, is that? I mean. I don't think so. I no. think new comedy is still, you know, the freshest, funniest stuff. Yeah, Even though the yeah. vets are doing it, they're still good, but they're still not going through what we're all going through right, and right, not, right. you know, not having money, trying to figure out right. how things work. Right. You know, like you see Adam Sandler, they're well intentioned. They're really funny still, and they're doing other things, but they're talking about million dollar problems now. Right. You know, <laughs> like and I don't think it's as relatable. Ah. Uh, it, it's again, it's funny. I'm not like discounting their 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 struggle and their fight to keep relevant and do their thing. But right. I I thoroughly enjoy I, I'll watch a Seinfeld, I'll watch them and they're funny, but I would I rather watch a new person kill it. Yeah. And like find their voice. Yeah. That's what like I find amazing. It's like, oh man, that person knows what they're talking about now. Absolutely. I think man. it's cool. I so I think forgot. I don't think it's a problem. What are you thinking? I'm gonna be same you. answer. <laughs> same answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start with you for now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think comedy is always changing, so it's kind of interesting to see them uh, come back and see like how they adapt yeah. to what's going on now. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. But it doesn't make you feel like, damn, dude, if Jerry was on stage, that'd be that, that's my stage time. There's none of that. There's none of that. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not my <laughs> stage time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Th- so what do you feel like new? Con- and I'll start with you, Emily. Like what? can new comedians do to put their stamp on this generation of comedy? Like what, you know, to to make it like, all right, this is the new era or those guys, you know. Because I feel yeah. like that happened with Eddie and those guys. You knew when Milton Berle and those guys were kind of done. You know what I mean? Yeah. You knew when they could come back, they could, but it was like that's a different time yeah, because this is the like, new stuff. Yeah. Like what do, is there something that we can do or is it is there none of that anymore? No. Um, <laughs> just get your just get yours. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, like Nick was saying, like it's important just to be s- unique. Uh, like if so, you just have to be yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah. And nobody wants to see another Seinfeld. We want to see the right. Seinfeld, but we don't want to see another <laughs> yeah. Seinfeld or another Chappelle. Uh-huh. So it's a um, more interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, I agree with Emily. Like, it's like when I watch comics, like, a great comic is someone who has their own voice and only can write those jokes for them. Right. If they're writing a Tinder joke that's about dating, a million other people can write that joke. You know what I mean? It has to be so unique to them. Right. That's what makes it special. And then Seinfeld came and copied that or Sandler, (laughs) whatever it is, you know, like, it's them. Yeah, yeah. I've, and I've seen you on stage with some beasts, Nick. Has anybody ever, have you ever been in an improv set with somebody who intimidated you? All the time. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, there's so many great performers out there. Yeah. Like, you know, nowadays I don't kind of work myself up to it. Right. Like, you know, work, but like, you know, there's definitely some people I admire. Yeah. And that I'm playing with and going like, just don't F this up. Right. You know, <laughs> just like, be good and yeah. like, do your thing and support them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And what about you, Emily? Have you ever been on a show with, with like uh, somebody on the lineup that you're like, oh shit, like you're starstruck by them or you want them want to impress that person? Um, yeah, all the time, especially like when I perform at Largo because you're on. Oh yeah, on the show with they like crazy lineups. heavy hitters. Pete Holmes. Sarah. Yeah. Oh, Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman. Have you Kate performed Guitaro. with her? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, did, what did you think of your set? Oh, did she watch you? Yeah, she said some really nice things. Oh, she's huh? just like super nice. So who knows if she was just being nice? <laughs> being nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're. Just, I, just, you're I don't great. know. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's been super nice, but yeah, there's definitely like sometimes just like another comic in the back who's just like your peer who you respect a lot, who's yeah. never seen you but you like want to do really well in front of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
That's interesting. The great thing about comedy over drama and stuff, because I've done yeah. both kind of shows and yeah. things, is comedians have all been through the same thing. Uh -huh. So there's a kind of a sisterhood or a brotherhood to it of like, right. I know where you've been. Mm. Like, I might have made it, you know, and they're right. rich and fame, but they know they've come from there. Right, right. So there's right. a better understanding, I think, of, yeah. of the struggle, and yeah. they still appreciate it. Yeah. 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 And sometimes, uh, is that not true of drama? Like, sometimes they're kind I think, of I mean, like, it could be in the sense, oh, but okay. the con, like, the, uh, you not, have as, not to. as much. Yeah. Like, there's not like going to bars and doing drama prop, <laughs> you know, like, and, and being underground and just the seller or whatever, you know? Yeah. Like, they kind of just have their mom and dad and then that are already rich and famous and get in but right. but then co comedians we got to grind you we have grind to. at every level yeah and i'm sure yeah. the dr drama folks grind but they grind in a different way in a very different yeah. way absolutely now with both of you guys i, I want to so i always ask this cuz paulie you do the uh, he he does a podcast it, and what's it, it's called the 101 uh, no well it's called the paul antonio it's show it's called the paul antonio show mm -hmm. but i'm counting down the top 101 comics of all right time, right i've seen all the lists I don't agree with them. So uh, I, got, I got my <laughs> list out there. good, man. So with that in mind, I want to get your guys. Now, I'm going to – in, in well, you don't have to do it in order. But who are your – and with for you, Nick, because I know you do sketch, improv, and stand-up. You can include – the you know, just make it a general – yeah. yeah, it could be stand-ups. You, you have to stick to stand-ups. But, Nick, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Like, stand-up. What do what you, what you, what you know? Not <laughs> anything else, but no, Nick. Like I don't know. Like what do you say? I guess you can include sketch performers, improvisers. Your top five comedic oh performers for you. But I'll start with you, Emily. Who are your top five stand-up comedians uh, of all time? Of all time? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part where people talk um, crap to you in the comments and say, "What the hell are you talking about?" You know, but Sarah yeah. Silverman. Sarah Silverman. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, I just performed with uh, Ronnie Chang. Oh, okay. And he like he blew my mind. He's so good. Hell yeah. Okay. Cool. Two. You got three more. Hell yeah. <laughs> Ronnie Chang, Sarah Silverman, Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. All right. Hell yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you could cut cut all the dead time. No, no, no. Hey, I love it. It's, it's real. tough to, to It makes do. it real. So like it is very hard. I love it. I love it. I was panicking. I'm glad Emily went first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Morgan Murphy. Morgan Murphy. And wait, what, what Morgan Murphy? She's from wait. Ah, oh, she's in LA. LA? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm trying to think of where I know the name. Is she does she have a show or is she kind of she's a writer a writer mm -hmm. okay Morgan Murphy all right hell yeah Norm Macdonald Norm Macdonald oh, there we Norm go McDonald. all right that's all a good right. one that's, that's, a, good, that's a good that's list. a great list that's a great list all right now yours might oh, be a little tougher because it includes stand up sketch artists or improvisers yeah, and some of them crossover I guess I yeah mean, of like course. I would say Farley Farley would be my first yeah um, Dana Carvey Dana Carvey um, it, and these are all old school. Um, uh, I love Tina Fey. I put her in that list. She's yeah. a very influential, great writer, performer. Yeah. Um, and how many is that? Three. That's three. Oh gosh. Um, uh, oh, this is just more recent because I've just been watching it. But Jan Hooks. Jan <laughs> Hooks. Out live. I don't know if you remember. She did the Sweeney Sisters. Oh like, yeah. Okay. Back. It's a classic sketch, but she's just a good actor, yeah. but also like a performer, and I just always enjoyed her. Yeah, uh, as a performer, um, she's deceased, so can't meet her. But I've always wanted to meet her. Yeah, and um, I would say, oh, uh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. I love, I love old school Eddie Murphy. Yeah, yeah. heck yeah, man, yeah. that's dope. All right, now this list to me is a little more important because it kind of puts a light on the next generation. So from, and I'll start with you again, Emily. Like from your being at mics or just being at shows and seeing, who would you say, uh, should we make it five? Yeah, five. Because I think I've been putting it at three. That's really hard. Maybe five for the, who you feel like are going to be um, the next stars of comedy, in your opinion. And you can include yourself, you know, you, you know, feel free, most people do, because otherwise, why would you do it? But if you don't, 
cool, but like in the next, let's say, 10, 5, 10 years, who do you say going to be household comedic names in your opinion based on what you've seen in the scenes? Sean Grant. Oh, yeah. oh, he was so sweet. Dang, that's good, though. I like that. He told me to say that. <laughs> Why did you just hand you 20 bucks? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Amy Miller. Amy Miller. Okay. Should we alternate? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that might be a good idea. All right, I'm yeah. trying to think of names. I see so many people. Right, uh, I right. honestly, I would put you in that, Sean. Oh, I like your work. You. I mean, as an improviser and a comic, and thank just you. for laughs and stuff like that. Uh, definitely. Uh, like, I would say that there's people that I think might be comics or, but like, just in the business, like Nicole Blaine. No, like she, yeah. She's a hard worker and yeah. a good writer and things that make nature. Those would be two off the top of my head. There you go. Right okay. now. So we got Amy Miller, Nicole Blaine. Yeah. Steve Hernandez. Steve Hernandez. Well, yeah. Steve's, Steve's out in uh, he's out in the um, is it the IE or the Orange County? Is, is Steve the one you, you uh, run to? Yeah, uh, Covina's SG. Covina. Okay. Okay. San Gabriel Valley. In San Gabriel Valley. Yeah. Heck yeah. Steve Hernandez. Yeah. Another. I don't young Steve. Up. Yeah, that's good. Um. Oh, let's see. Who else? Um. Trying to think of names. I'm seeing faces, but I see a lot of right, right, faces. Right. That was a tough uh, one. Who, uh, no, no, no. Um, gosh, he won the show showdown. Uh, oh, last year was a Roman Roman. He won last year's right. Yeah, 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 Roman. Yeah. Miller. I want to say. Think, Roman. Yeah, I think we're getting it wrong. God, I it's so I feel bad. Like it's Roman though. Yeah, Ro- Roman, I know yeah. Roman. Yeah. He's great. And then um, uh, uh, the, the gentleman Trevor. Uh, uh, who won the showdown two years ago? Oh, uh, the, it's not the English guy. No, the English no, no. And Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. Uh, gosh, I'm <laughs> so bad at this. Please, yeah. <laughs> every I've done a terrible job. No, you guys know who you are. I have a list at my <laughs> right. <laughs> these notes. Put your name, yeah. Trevor and Roman. Put your names <laughs> in the comment section so yeah. we all can follow you. But you had two more. Uh, anybody else you could think of? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're asking two yeah. comics like who could you say myself no right. <laughs> Emily you know. shout out <laughs> shout out some friends yeah, yeah. Uh, Stephen Fury Stephen Fury heck yeah Torio Van Grohl Torio Van Grohl and Zach Trapaloni heck yeah man you know so uh, we all gonna make it damn it that's how I feel I feel like all of us but you know uh, it's just fun to shout out the next the, the, those guys cause you know they were out here working, and it's hard to get those list recognitions and stuff like that. Yeah. It's interesting because, like, you you see so much. I, I see yeah. so much. Right. <clears throat> like, and, and with comics, right. <clears throat> pardon me, with comics, like, they come in and out. Like, right. it's so many that I see that yeah. I'm like, I, I'll write their name down yeah, uh, or talk to them afterwards yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that to, like, come see me because yeah. I really like their set or something like that and want to get them booked. Oh, dude, so I'd that's kind of how I operate. I would have been uh, horrified if I got enough. <laughs> like, I'm not, that sounds like he's going to ban me. <laughs> yeah. Can I get your email before we leave? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> You've got two weeks, and then I'm not the artist. Right, that's before. right. Oh, yeah, so Carla Kakowski is going to be taking over mm-hmm. for you at the West Side. Mm-hmm. But um, you, so to, but to do the voodoo, like, you know, you can still hit yeah, you up you in can Denver. Hit me up. Uh, honestly, I, I'm close to the West Side, so obviously hit me up. I right. can still... I could still have some sway. In hey, getting some stage time. heck yeah, man! So yeah, we want great people, you know. So uh, absolutely, and I'm glad you brought up the showdown because, um, yeah, like like you said, like um, it's coming up. Submissions are open now for the yeah. Westside Comedy Theater showdown. It's five minutes, you two rounds. Right, everybody gets to perform yeah, for two rounds, two rounds for sure. Uh, if you get into the festival, and then there's a final. And round you got. Time. You got in it. I got yeah, I got in it. Got second place, and it got me to JFL. And actually, I just found out um, in an email uh, that it the somebody from Time Out LA was at the uh, showcase, and I'm one of next year's stand ups to watch because nice. of that one yeah. five minutes. So, so guys, do the West Side Comedy Theater showdown, it's man. It's a great. It's you a get great. Some, you get seen by some really cool people. You do. You I do. thought it was a spam email. I ignored the email, and then she <laughs> emailed me uh, in my other. <laughs> <laughs> like, who is this? Just imagine if you didn't do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, man. I'd be I'd be so far much further along. <laughs> but yeah, guys. So so do that. How can people stay in touch with you, Nick? Uh, I know you're on Instagram and Facebook and stuff. Yeah, Instagram at Mr. Energy. 
Um, yeah. And then uh, Nick Armstrong on Twitter. Nick Armstrong on Twitter. Heck yeah. And, and if they want to email you, they'll figure out. Oh, Nick at VoodooComedy.com, I guess, since I'm moving forward from the west side. Right, yeah. yeah. And if you're in Denver, and or if you guys just want to check out shows, go to Voodoo Comedy Theater. How do people stay in touch with you, Emily? Twitter, Emily Catalano, or Instagram, Catalano underscore Emily. Nice. You got any shows coming up next week? This will drop Tuesday of next week. You guys, uh, before the show, uh, for the year ends, you have anything going down in the Los Angeles area anywhere? Um... Going out of town for Christmas, but yeah, uh, January seventh, Largo with Sarah Silverman. Nice, yeah. heck yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there watching. Too. I'm actually, yeah. I think I'm taking the rest of the year off. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I, I perform at King Ten on Mondays at West yeah. Side, which has been a, a team for about seventeen years, yeah. and uh, Culp County Line. Heck that's yeah, that's all I'm doing. Love two uh, show. improv shows. Yeah. And then in the new year, I'll do some new stuff now that I have the time. Nice. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. A little chill time, man. You guys yeah. can follow me at Mr. Sean Grant. You can follow Paul Antonio at the Paul Antonio, right? Yes, sir. The Paul Antonio. And if you guys want to check out what Comedy Pop-Up's got going on, they have a Twitter and Instagram. It's at Comedy Pop-Up. And they always have shows, ComedyPopUpLA.com, if you want to check out the shows that are coming up. Do they have anything specifically going on next week, Paulie, that you uh, can think of? Just check out all the podcasts on the CPU Podcast Network. You can find us YouTube.com slash oh, CPU yeah. Podcast Network. Follow us on Instagram at Comedy Pop-Up and at CPU Podcast. Nice. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in. And thank you guys for joining us, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, see you guys later. Peace. Peace.